self-sabotage and weight loss, why we do it, and how to stop it. And if this topic interests you, be sure to join my free Facebook community where we talk about navigating perimenopause and menopause, balancing your hormones naturally, and weight loss. So I understand this topic all too well. <clears throat> I was a sugar addict for years and I tried and I failed so many times to get off sugar. I would wake up thinking about sugar and I would go to bed thinking about sugar. I would say things to myself like, why do, you, why do I even try? I'm just going to fail. Why do I keep overeating? I'll never get off sugar. Or it's just too hard. So maybe your goal is weight loss during menopause. And I hear many of my clients say, I've tried everything and the weight just won't come off. And many times, this is where the self-sabotaging behavior starts. Um, so take this scenario. You get up, you eat a nutritious, healthy breakfast, you brown bag your lunch to work, the office secretary brings in cupcakes for one of the employees' birthdays. You're good. You had that nutritious breakfast, and so far, the cupcakes aren't calling your name. Now, 3 p.m. rolls around, you're starting to feel your energy slump, you go and grab some coffee in the break room, and what's glaring at you but those darn cupcakes, right? So you grab one with your coffee for a pick-me-up, that'll hurt, right? Then you head home, starving, because you had lunch at 11 o'clock, it's now 5 o'clock, and, and you still gotta cook, cook supper when you get home. You're tired and cooking supper is just, it's just not going to happen tonight, okay? So you decide to bring home some KFC for dinner. You tell yourself, I'll just have one piece of white meat and I'll, I'll pull the skin off and, and maybe, maybe a small serving of mashed potatoes and, and then I'll be good. No harm, right? So you get home, you, sp you spread out the chicken and all the sides on the bar and you tell everyone dinner's ready. It's good, but you haven't had KFC in a while. Maybe that honey and biscuit, it's just calling your name. Might as well, right? I mean, you've already sabotaged your, your good morning with the cupcakes this afternoon. So you eat the chicken, you know, you pull off the skin, thinking that'll save a few calories. You get a side of potatoes and gravy, and oh, don't forget the honey and the biscuit. You finish, you're full, way too full. And you ask yourself, why do I keep overeating? Why do I even try? Every day I start off great and then it just falls apart. Then two hours after dinner, your husband gets a bowl of ice cream and he asks you if you want some. You think to yourself, I've already messed up today. I'll just have one bowl and tomorrow I'll be good. But food is typically not the problem. Most of the time, it's some form of emotion um, that's sabotaging our weight loss efforts. <clears throat> you know, maybe you had a stressful day at work. Maybe you didn't sleep that night. Maybe... Maybe you're not getting enough protein during the day and you're struggling with constant cravings, okay? And that negative self-talk can also play a role in self-sabotage. So we've got to address these. I've worked with lots of women over the years and the ones who get to the root, root cause of this first are the ones who have lasting weight loss. And if you don't address the real reason for your self-sabotaging and the negative self-talk, it's going to be very hard to lose the weight and keep it off. But it'll be so worth it in the long run. When you, when you look at food and, and not have those emotions tied to it, you know, but we've got to get to the root cause first. Sure, you know, you can lose weight on a, on a diet program or one of the newest fad diets, but, but keeping it off is the key. And I've been in a lot of those diet programs actually just to find out what they're really like and, and what they're missing. Because I have clients that come to me all of the time who say they've been on and off these so-called diets for years, you know, but most don't get to the root cause of the weight loss resistance in the first place. 
That's why you find yourself yo-yo dieting, self-sabotaging, experiencing the negative self-talk because they aren't addressing the root cause. And most diets and diet programs fail because they don't address the mindset, behaviors, habits, our beliefs. And many times those beliefs are they're deep rooted and they've been there for a long time, maybe maybe even since childhood. So let's talk about some ways to overcome these self-sabotaging behaviors during menopause. And remember, if you like this topic, you know, be sure to join my free Facebook group um, so you can learn more and the links below. So I'm not going to minimize how important it is to start with a strong foundation with nutrition, balancing sleep, stress, exercising. I mean, those are all those are all part of creating sustainable, lasting weight loss during menopause. But if you find yourself self-sabotaging on a daily or a weekly basis, you've got to address the root cause. Why are you really doing it? Ask yourself this, this question. And food typically isn't the problem. It's, again, it's our emotions, the beliefs, our negative self-talk, more times than not, this is the problem. So what are some ways you can start to address those self-sabotaging behaviors? The first one I want to talk about is develop, develop self-awareness. So sometimes we do these behaviors unconsciously. We're not even aware we're even doing them. Think about your situation and start to form this sentence. <clears throat> I want to achieve goal, but I keep doing behavior. I want to lose 20 pounds, but I keep eating ice cream every night after dinner. I want to exercise 30 minutes in the morning, but I I spend too much in front in time too much time in front of the television. So you might ask yourself these questions so you become more more self-aware. Do I eat out of hunger or habit? Am I constantly thinking about food during the day and why? Am I avoiding exercise because I, I don't think it's worth it or because I use the excuse I'm too busy? And journaling is a terrific way to uncover this. Okay, number two, change your habits. So once you're aware of the problem, now you can work on creating some changes. And habit stacking is a great way to do this. Um, you know, it can be hard to change your habits. They've been wired into you know, your brain for a very long time. But the first place I like to start with my clients is habit stacking. And this is where you add on a healthy habit to an already established habit. Um, so an example might be while, you're, while your coffee is brewing, um, you drink a full glass of water. Or after you shower at night, you lay out your, your walking clothes for the next morning. We want these habits to become second nature, okay? The next one is feel your feelings. This can be a hard one because many times we're eating to avoid these feelings or we're using food to make us feel better. Being real and honest with ourselves, sometimes it can hurt a little bit or a lot. Um, but if you want to move past these self-sabotaging behaviors, you know, it's time to get to the root cause of them. Okay, number four, watch yourself talk. So why we say things to ourselves that we would never say to, to someone else. Work on reframing your negative thought patterns. When you say things like, I can't, you're setting yourself up for failure. So start reframing those I can, in those into I can statements instead of I can't. So I can get up 30 minutes early every morning and exercise. I, I can choose not to eat that ice cream every night after dinner. Number five, plan ahead. So planning your meals and snacks ahead of time will help you avoid self-sabotage. It can be so easy, you know, just to grab something on the fly when you're not prepared. I've been there. Uh, it's hard. And it's usually high carb, um, high calorie. But when you've got a plan, you typically make better choices. For example, if you tend to overeat at night, there are usually three main reasons for this. So it could be boredom, stress, hunger, 
And knowing why you're overeating at night and understanding these triggers, they can help prevent that self-sabotage and help you to make better choices. Number six, fuel up on nourishing foods. So when you're not getting the right amount of protein, healthy fats, healthy carbs at each meal, you're setting yourself up to struggle with cravings all day. And it makes self-sabotaging way easier. And the next one is accountability. So finding ways to stay accountable to yourself can go a long way in preventing self-sabotage. Set weekly goals um, and journal to help you stay accountable for those goals. What happened during the day to get you off track? What did you do to stay on track? Find a support group. If you need more personalized and one-on-one -on -one support, hire a health coach to guide you and help keep you accountable so you can reach your goals sooner and faster. There is absolutely no judgment here, believe me. I've been there myself. But following these steps I just mentioned will go a long way when it comes to getting to the root cause of those self-sabotaging behaviors when it comes to weight loss. And remember, if you found this topic interesting, be sure to join my free Facebook community where we talk about balancing your hormones naturally, weight loss, and navigating perimenopause and menopause. The link's below.